Good morning, people. Just some more thoughts for the oncoming Sabbath. Father, I pray that this Sabbath is a Sabbath for your word and your way. As stated in Isaiah 58, 13, that we shall not turn our foot away from the Sabbath. I do this in preparation for your coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. I just want to do a little video about blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Uh, excuse me, I got to read this off so uh, I keep my focus. This is Matthew 12, 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all matter of sin and blasphemy shall be unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. I just want to say something here about the blasphemy. What is the definition of blasphemy? And I got to get it up here. But... The word is important because what is received from the word? Blasphemy. When you use it in a positive way, this is my computer screwing up on me again, but when you use words, you're influencing people. Blasphemy. And that's why they're saying blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is you're influencing correctly or incorrectly. Contentious or profound speech or action concerning God or a s sacred entity. An instance of this, I wish I had reverse on this, I could show you, but just Google it, it's easier. Anyways, I say that changing the word of God is the mark of the beast. Why? Because that is spiritual. It's in your heart, you think it, and through the works of your hands, you show it. So, Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost to me is because Jesus went to the cross with the punishment of our sin. He left the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost translates scripture for us and guides us through this salvation uh, system we have. So, if the Holy Ghost tells you something and you change it to influence people wrongly, would that be blasphemy of the Holy Ghost? And all these people that want to attack me on these little details on what this looks like, what's that? <laughs> I stutter, you know. Uh, you, you guys, there's a word you're not supposed to use to call somebody in, in the scripture. And you're obviously wise enough and smarter than me. You know what it is. It's a simple word used every day. And it rhymes with pool. But what else do you call them? Heavy hearted? Antichrists? Accusers from the beginning? Now, there's another scripture here I want to bring up to attention. It's Revelation 22, 18 to 20. I'm sorry about this mess, but hey, you know what? It's really not what I want. I don't want you to really see me. It's just, okay, anyways. For I test unto every man that heareth the word of prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away part, excuse me, take away his part out of the book of life. 
and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testify these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Okay, now. So who's testifying? Well, this re revelations was given to John. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So. This is Jesus. If you back up a couple uh, verses, you'll see that uh, Jesus is speaking, that he's the bright and morning star. Okay. So Jesus is speaking this. For I testify unto every man that heareth these the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add to it, man is not better than our Savior. Do not add to it. Now, if I'm trying to translate scripture for somebody else, it's not adding to scripture. What it is, is giving an easier flow because then you go back to the scripture and it's in most of my videos well excuse me quite a few of my videos read the full chapter why because you need to be in the mindset I'll say the Godhead of the one who wrote the uh, the words of the chapter that's why they say this is the revelation of John the Baptist from Jesus Christ Anyways, the New Age Bibles take all these little baby steps of information that people don't breathe the word. They don't inhale it. They don't digest it. They don't claim it from the end of their tongue as we are supposed to make disciples throughout all nations this will come on later on so let's get on here so it says that if you take away from this book or if you add to this book you will be punished double okay so let's go to Isaiah 55 11 so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And I shall propose, uh, prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Excuse me, and I'll read that last bit again. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Now, even right there, the English language has been changed to what we use today. And the spellings, if you read the posts that I give you, somebody knows who I'm talking about, you'll see the spelling in, in the, the scripture. I can read that spelling a lot easier than I can read the spelling that I was taught in school. I flow through the scripture in the King James 1611 Shakespeare, Shakespeare style reading okay I've had a problem reading all my life I was uh, dyslectic and um, I had a uh, learning uh, uh, hinder I forget what they call it uh, I, I, I forget names quite often and this is from an injury a head injury when I was a, a child but anyways <clears throat> that's what gave me this in inspiration to write um, the harvesting about the neurotransmitters and reading scriptures for seven years because of the rebuild of scripture or the rebuild of the trans neurotransmitters that scriptures do because we are creatures of habit and what we put into our mind is going to come out in autopilot so the word is used for a reason. It is used for salvation. So then if you change the word, 
then you're removing the possibility of salvation. And what are you doing? You're doing the mark of the beast. Okay? John 10, 34 through 38. Jesus answered them. This is when the scribes and the Pharisees were attacking Jesus about who he was. Uh, he claimed he was the son of God. He didn't claim he was the father. He didn't claim he was God. Uh, he claimed he was the son of God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are God's small g, which is a noun. If you call them God's small g, noun, unto, the, unto whom the word of God came, capital G, which is a proper pronoun. And the scriptures cannot be broken. Say he of him who the Father hath sent. Who did the Father send? John 3, 16. And set it into the world. Thou blasphemy, Jesus told us right there. You're hearing the word of scripture and you're changing it. You blasphemy? Here we go. Because I say... I am the son of God. If I do not the works of my father, who? The father. Believe me not. But if I do, thou yet believe me not. Believe the works that ye may know and believe that the father is in me. The heart, the word, the information and I in him because if we are in Jesus Jesus is in us and this blows the Trinity back to the Roman Catholic Church which Roman Christianity is an oxymoron it is actually Roman Catholic Islam The I am is Jesus recognizing who he is. As when Jacob uh, was told who he was, as Peter was told who he was, as the disciples were told who he was, as Lucifer was told who he was. Before Genesis 1-2, And Satan was in the Garden of Eden. Time passed. It was the fall of the angels. And we are living on earth for salvation. So, if I am wrong, I am blaspheming the Holy Ghost. And the only thing you can use is scripture. And Jonathan Cleck, you just got spanked, buddy. I'm praying for you. Repent. Father, thank you for keeping me to the words of salvation rather than the words of man. It is so important. As Jesus said on the cross, Father, why have you forsaken me? Though Jesus know he could not hear the, you could not hear his prayers at that time because he was forsaken. It was for the people that was watching. It was for us. And you want to laugh at this? You can go blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And you know who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen.